Hi everyone, Tuesday tip, Kristen here. So a teacher emailed me the other week asking for some help with getting their students to make Minecrafts, which prompted some super interesting conversations and thoughts that I figured I would share. So the first one that we were thinking about was like, well, what are they actually struggling with in terms of making their line grass? I should say, this was a high school teacher. So we're, we were talking about trying to help them get their ninth and 10th graders making better sense of line grass, actually making them. So the first question was, are they having trouble scaling the axes? And after a lot of sort of back and forth talking about it, we were thinking like, if they're in high school, they should just be using Google Sheets and Excel. It automatically scales their axes for them. It is not necessarily worth the couple handful of students who are still struggling with scaling axes in high school to take time for everybody in your class to get them to scale those axes by hand. That is a one off support for a couple students that for those students, it can be really helpful, but it's not worth it for everybody else when in high school we should be using our technology more. So then another question was like, well, are they struggling to like figure out when to connect the dots and why to use the line? Which then prompted us to think about, well, do they even know what the line represents? Do they even know why we are using the line and what that line actually indicates? Why do we connect dots together onto a line chart? Well, it's when we're using ordinal data, when the values at one time point are related to, connected to, in a specific order, to the values at another point on that axis. Well, that's like a lot of gibberish, like what the heck does that mean? Well, if you're looking, if you're in one car and putting it down the ramp, the speed that that car was going one second into the ramp is related to and is ordered by what speed it is going, like what happens at two seconds. You cannot get to two seconds down the ramp without that car, that individual car going through that one second time point. That means time is an ordered variable. It is ordinal. And so if we had measured the speed of that car at one and a half seconds, it would more than likely have been somewhere between what it was at one second and what it was at two seconds as it was going down the ramp. That's what that line indicates. It gives us a general sense of had we taken another measurement between that ordered, those ordered spots when we did take measurements, it most likely would show up on that line. More often than not, Google Sheets chart editor defaults to a line graph, but we don't really have any sense of what that line represents, which makes it really hard for students to know when should I connect the dots and when should I not? Why do we plot a line of fit in a scatter plot, but we actually connect the dots in a line chart? It's this piece, this ordinal piece. And ordinal is such a wonky thing to explain to students, but having them engage in a conversation of, well, should we collect the data? Should we collect the dots? What would that tell us? What would that inform us? What could we learn from that dot? can unpack and make their thinking visible for us so that we can have a sense of where they're getting tripped up and help them build the skill of what actually is a line chart. I was having another conversation this morning with some high school science, high school, middle school science and math teachers. There were a whole group of us in a room together this morning. And we again were talking about how often it's a line chart that we're showing our students, but really what we're looking at, the questions we're after, the variables we're looking at, it really should be a scatter plot where we plot a line of fit within the data. And so thinking about, okay, is it a scaling axes issue? Well, let's use our technology. Is it a like conceptually they don't understand what the line connecting the dots means? Great. Let's have a conversation. Let's engage them with a conversation. It is worth the 10 minutes of a discussion for them to conceptually get it. Yes, does it bump other things back? Absolutely, but it will save you time in the long run. So then that brings us to the third point that I was having with this with this teacher a couple weeks ago of are they getting tripped up of actually plotting the data values? Now, this one really factors in when they're plotting by hand, but also when they're plotting using Google Sheets and Excel, because it all comes down to how we organize those data check out the data by data organization. 
it all comes down to it. But we had this aha moment for their for their students where we were thinking, okay, what if we just ordered the data like that XYT chart where it's like X and Y, like our students are used to seeing it. They start to see it in sixth grade math. They start to see it in eighth grade math. They keep building on it where it's X comma Y in parentheses, those of us that learned it that way. And if we ordered our science data tables that way as well, could that help? Could we help by even putting an X or a Y above? Is this hand holding? Yes, but if your students, if our learners are struggling, well, then shouldn't we provide that scaffold initially to see if that helps get them over the hump? And then later we can take that scaffold away, right? The whole benefit of scaffolding. It's there for when they need it. And then they build that skill and then we peel it back. And then we peel it back. We add a third variable. We get them to organize the data. We add another variable in, da, 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 whatever those peeling the scaffolds backs are. But if you're at a point like this teacher was of banging their head against the wall of like, my students aren't getting it with the line chart. What can I do? It can be helpful to pause and be like, what part can't they do? What part are they struggling with? And use, these were three. I'm sure there's many others, but these were the three that we were, that I was talking about with that teacher that were resonating for their students. So what's resonating for your students? What's working for yours? How are you helping your students make sense of line charts and getting those? Share them in the comments so we can learn from one another. Bye all. Hope you all have a good day and that you get your students playing with those line charts. It'll be good.